COVID-19 took the world by surprise. The virus spread globally, impacting communities, ecosystems and supply chains. Industries like tourism, healthcare, hospitality, entertainment, airport transportation, etc. had a massive hard hit on themselves. The focus today for most businesses is now protecting employees, managing the risk of supply chain disruptions, as well as looking at the overall aspect of how do we protect the business. The Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing, the national body of marketing, celebrates this year 50 years of existence, feeding abundance of marketing knowledge over decades, and they have helped many organizations and business to inspire globally. Slim believes that it is their national responsibility to help communities, institutions, as well as to help them during difficult times. So Slim presents a knowledge sharing discussion platform where I have the pleasure of interviewing a number of different personality, personalities from various industries to share their secrets, recommendations, what's best to do in a crisis situation. We have gone through this before, but the realm of going through it again, what do we do in a situation like this? As there are a number of queries coming up now, people are questioning as to what will happen to their daily income. With all of this, uh, we'll be managing that will enlighten a number of marketing uh, fraternity friends as well as business corporates to join us in this engagement and we we'll take on from there to see how best we can support you during a pandemic crisis. Now today we're joined by the independent non-executive director at SDB Bank, uh, the board member for South Asia Pacific Partnership of Sri Lanka. Previously, he held the position of private secretary to the Honorable Deputy Speaker at Parliament, and he held the position of chairman of the Regional Development Bank, CEO, head of DFCC Consulting Private Limited, and vice president, regional manager for DFCC Bank. Today, we're going to speak on the topic of burning issue of managing crisis during a cash flow. We're very honored to have with us Mr. Prasanna Premaratna, who has joined me on this uh, live session here today. Uh, good day to you. We certainly hope you're staying safe and it's great to join you in this very important juncture that we uh, see how Sri Lanka can be uh, can move forward with the initiatives. My first question to you. COVID-19 has put most businesses into a mode of survival thinking and in such a mode, business leaders can get dragged into focusing more on profitability, on um, revenue when it comes to um, staff security and their welfare, um, stakeholder management, etc. and etc. In such a backdrop, there is a huge focus primarily towards cash flow. I feel uh, it's the right time to talk about uh, this cash flow management, especially uh, when you talk about the cash flow management, whether it is a large company or a small company, uh, it is very important that we have a positive cash flow. That means uh, we should have cash in our drawer for, uh, to make the payments, especially the salary is on time and uh, other payments like uh, okay electricity bills water bills and your other EPF EPF that kind of thing so it is very important that we have uh, sufficient cash with us uh, if you talk about the small businesses this is where the people go out of business when they have a negative cash flow and that means they don't have money to meet their expenses so they can easily go uh, out of business Going by your answer, Mr. Premaratna, some say that chief executive officers, CEOs today, have to think like a CFO. What's your view on that? Well, of course, yes. Because uh, CFO is the person uh, who is managing the, managing the cash flows and, and, and he's the one who is giving all the information to the CEO regarding the financial situation of the company. So depending on his report, only CEO takes together with the board takes decisions. So it is very important that 
see if you understand the uh, current situation and the, uh, the financial situation of the company and uh, manage the affairs. In this time, there is a hard call for uh, staff costs without getting emotional in the interest of better cash management or is this the time to take care of staff in order to maintain better strong relationship more like royalty to taking care of staff uh, well, Sharon, uh, it's like this when you take a company whether it is a small or a big company we work as a family and a team so it is up to the uh, employee and the employer to act together as a team, as a family. So, com from company's point of view, the management should look after the their staff. You should not uh, kind of harass them at this moment because everybody is facing this difficult situation. And as you know, if if you have a peace at home and if you have a happy home, so you can come and deliver uh, at, the, at 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 your workplace. That is very important. So human resource is a very important aspect in a company. So I don't think that we should harass our, especially the, the junior staff because they, they get only a very small amount as salary. But of course, at the, at the, on, the, on their side, the, they, they should put in more than 100% to the company uh, and uh, come out of this difficult situation. And uh, we must not expect uh, over time or extra extra share payment that kind of thing so they must understand the situation because then we, when there is there are good times the company has always given you a lot of uh, incentives uh, extra share payment bonuses uh, various things so i think even the, uh, the staff should understand the situation and then they should put in more than 100 percent to the betterment of the company now at the center of cash flow management is the notion of getting your customers to pay early and delaying your supplier payments as much as possible. But in this context, would it be challenging to take this approach because all these businesses are hit and no one would like to go and get paid late? So how? Do we overcome in such a situation like this? Because people need to curtail their day-to-day -day needs. Uh, yes, sure. No. Everybody likes to delay their payments. That is the normal practice in Sri Lanka. People ask for credit if you want to buy something. But at the same time, uh, as you said, everybody is facing this crisis situation. So everyone would like to have their money in their drawer. So for the essential payments and all that. Now, for an example, if you take the, the take a bank, right now, since last year, the the government was giving a lot of uh, concessions to the small and medium industries as well as for the uh, other companies, and then they extended uh, through the banks a moratorium that means to postpone their capital and and interest payments. So it's a difficult situation for the banks. So, but. Uh, and this time, when we just ended this moratorium period, and then this happened. So now the government is proposing another moratorium, which the banks have agreed to give. I mean, everybody can understand the difficult situation. But at the same time, if you think from the bank's point of view, banks are also hit because uh, the, we don't get the cash flows in. So banks will find difficult to maintain their, uh, their lending and all that stuff. So, I mean, it's a cycle, you know, you, you uh, bring money into the bank and then uh, you give it back to the customers and also to the depositors. So that kind of a situation. So anybody would like to delay, your, delay their payments, but at the same time, you must not delay too much. Mr. Premaratna, over dependence on a single limited number of markets would be a key impact for a number of organizations and institutions. What actions do you propose for a business to mitigate um, such single market dependence? Well, uh, uh, Sharon, actually this is a problem in Sri Lanka. Most of our companies, big companies as well as the smaller uh, companies, they are comfortable when they find a market. 
and then they find one market they uh, keep on supplying to that uh, particular customer without thinking uh, any any difficulties in case i mean like this covid 19 so when you have only a single market you always face problems but uh, we actually we always i i am I'm, i'm a banker so but uh, and especially i was handling these small and medium type of customers i always advise them to have not only a single market look for other markets and also uh, to diversify their products add value to their products so that uh, we can always survive in a situation like this mr green ratna as a part of cash flow management should organizations rationalize and prioritize their product portfolios to suit the times could you elaborate with examples to support this i see so many multinationals today who have taken this initiative of customizing and being there supportive but would love to know your views on this i think i and i have with a bank i can tell you uh, this is an ideal situation uh, and also uh, we have already started thinking how we should uh, reorganize our portfolios how imagine now uh, the government has asked the banks to give moratorium to the small businesses at the same time once this problem is over we we think by end of this month we can we can restart most of these businesses and uh, i'm sure these people are not trying to spend money on capital goods or or infrastructure so because of that we have to give them short term loans to revive their businesses so that they can restart their production and come to the market so i think uh, it's it's very important that we we restructure the product portfolio and uh, as a bank i can tell you that we should not go for long term loans but we must go for short term loans at the same time we must not spend on uh, we must advise the customers not to spend on capital capital goods and buy vehicles and that kind of thing and so they should save their little money and spend on their businesses to restart their business so that they can go a long way Mr. Prem Ratna, we have seen big announcements uh, being made by companies on salary cuts. Um, this has been circulated. A lot of talk that has taken place, and I would like to know your thoughts and perspectives on such measures. Should such measures be applied across large organizations, or should they be based on each sub business, based on the immediate market demand? What are your views on that? Uh, it's like we share our IP. Now there are various businesses. Some businesses they have to close down uh, completely. Now if you take the airline business, now there are no passengers, so they have to uh, do something about their staff. But at the same time, as I said earlier, uh, it's the co- the company's duty to look after the employees as well. So if you take the garment industry, Sri Lanka. Uh, you know most of these girls who are working in the garment industry they are drawing only a very uh, minimal salary but if you give them a salary cut uh, imagine the difficulties they will have to undergo because they have so much of depending on their salary they have got bonus taken loans they have uh, committed so many other things so they have a, a monthly commitment to meet at the end of the day or end of the month so if you give them a salary cut they will face difficulties so some people may leave or some people may suffer mentally and they can't provide as i said they can't meet the 100% commitment when you come to work so i think uh, but they, at the same time they should understand without kind of going for extra share payments without claiming more time they must give the 100 or 100 more than 100% of the company uh, if you take the management of course management is always enjoying a lot of benefits so i think it's the management to take a voluntary pay cut that's, that is i think reasonable and uh, that's no harm they can always survive i mean most of the management uh, in sri lanka i know is sort of a senior manager ceos they are earning a good salary or I mean, a reasonable salary but they can always survive so they can uh, go for a pay cut all in good Mr. Supreme Ratna, what other ideas or recommendations would you like to 
give or share to our viewers uh, who maintains or runs organizations to achieve better cash flow planning. Um, is business interruption insurance something to look at? I can't tell exactly this is the path, but depending on uh, the various types of businesses, uh, it has to be a different, you know, banks would be different, uh, manufacturing is different, service sector is different. So, but, uh, uh, but this is not the first time Sri Lanka as a nation, this is not the first time we are facing a, a situation like this. But the only thing is the whole world is suffering, not only Sri Lanka. But uh, of course the exporters will, will face difficulties because their markets will be closed for the moment. But uh, I think uh, we must look at the problem proactively and uh, we must take it as a challenge. And, and, and go ahead. We, and we have enough and more examples in the past for us to learn lesson. As I said, we had tsunami, we had Easter Sunday attack. All those things uh, gave us some uh, thoughts, you know, time for us to think differently. So I think this is the time for us to change our strategy and find ways to survive and then improve our cash flows and then help each other. And as a nation, we must uh, go, go forward. Are we looking at really doom and gloom and survival? Or doesn't this situation put some significant opportunities on the table for both uh, globally and locally? Um, if you could please elaborate on this, because we see crisis coming um, in a very abrupt situation and sometimes we're never even prepared. Various uh, thoughts are there. Uh, even the, I saw that the, the IMF uh, has said that uh, there will be a contraction of more 3% in the world uh, economy. And uh, a lot of other other international agencies also have uh, predicted this kind of uh, contraction in our growth uh, in, the, in the global scenario. In Sri Lanka also, uh, uh, well, the governor of the central bank, he is confident and, uh, and the government is confident, the president is confident that we will maintain about two and a half to three percent growth during the rest of the year. Well, uh, I think uh, if you think proactively and positively, we should be able to come up. And then, as you said, uh, we must look for new opportunities. Now, these days, you can see the people are not going to supermarkets, but you know, a lot of uh, delivery channels are coming to your uh, house uh, doorstep. So, a lot of people have got opportunities by. Uh, bringing in a uh, lot of goods to the household. So that means we are creating a, a business kind of thing. And I heard that a lot of uh, people are now working from home and uh, also is, uh, working uh, through digital channels. So these are the opportunities. So we can uh, look at those things. And this is one, one or two, but um, there are many if you really uh, sit and work it out. Connecting this back to the topic, how can the right cash flow planning better equip an organization to capitalize on such opportunities to have an edge over others? We're trying to be ahead of organization in a competitive world, and here we are going through a pandemic crisis. Uh, as we started, I said that uh, the cash, cash flow management and the positive cash flows is the uh, uh, most important thing for a company to survive and uh, and to expand and grow. So we have to be very proactive as well as we have to be very careful when we are spending our money what we have at the moment because especially if I am talking about a bank, uh, since I am, I am working in a bank, uh, we should not waste a lot of money on uh, capital goods and things like that and that we must try and uh, use our money very sparingly but for a for a worth, worthy cost in the sense uh, now if you take a small and medium industry now we have been giving a lot of uh, small loans to the people but we should not give it give it for con consumption but we must give these uh, loans for uh, income generation purposes so that is how we should uh, look at uh, the, the market so uh, this is what I can tell you. Well, uh, it's, there are so many other uh, options 
so people have to sit and really work it out. Mr. Kramer Ratni, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us on this very insightful discussion. If you were to summarize in the form of recommendation, what would you like to say as a take-home for all our viewers? Well, uh, this is not the first time we are facing a challenge like this as a nation. So we must come back after the new year and you have enjoyed about month-long holiday. So we have uh, energy. So why not we start fresh and leave aside all the, all the bad uh, things at home and uh, think fresh and start fresh and uh, we'll work as a team and we'll help the nation to grow. I mean, I'm sure that this is a, an ideal opportunity for Sri Lanka to come out of the, this whole problem as well as uh, we can uh, grow our economy to a great, greater heights. Mr. Premier Ratna, it's an absolute honor and privilege to have you with us on our program. Uh, we certainly hope you stay safe. Thank you for the recommendations being shared. To all our viewers, we certainly hope you have some uh, knowledge that you gained today with today's discussion. And from time to time, we'll be interviewing different personalities to uh, gain their insights and best recommendations as to what we can do in terms of managing the crisis. On behalf of the Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing, we'd like to say thank you for joining us on our program. Until we see you next time, stay safe.